Hello again YouTube, my name is RJ, welcome to my workshop. Today I want to talk to you about the Harbor Freight 1720 pound trailer. Uh, this is the 4x8 model and I want to give you a long term review on this. I've seen a lot of reviews on the Harbor Freight trailers, the different sizes. Most of them people go and buy a new trailer, put it together, use it a couple times and then give a review on it. Which is fine, that's great. But I've had this trailer long enough that I want to be able to give you some of my long term, longer term uh, ideas about it and how it's held up for me. So, uh, this trailer's been used, it's probably got between five and 7,000 miles on it. I'm kind of, it's hard to estimate exactly. Again, I've had it seven years. It's been on several very long road trips, a 1,500 mile road trip, a 1,000 mile road trip. Uh, I don't overload it, so it's rated for 1,720 pounds. I don't. I've never been close to that. I, I don't think that. I don't think this is the trailer that you want if you are going to be right at the limit of it. Uh, you might be able to do it for moving short distances or something, but I think it would be tough on the trailer. However, I've moved on a regular basis. I'll move eight, 800 to 1,000 pounds with no problems. Uh, about two weeks ago, I hauled. Uh, 25 2 by 8 by 10 pressure treated uh, boards that were really wet and heavy and I estimated it was about 875 pounds. Uh, trailer handled it with no problems at all so it worked out very well for that. I've, uh, the first trip with it was 800 pound, 800 pound motorcycle again that was the 1500 mile trip so we learned about a lot about it right away on that. Um, overall the value on this thing has been great. Nowadays, I think these things are going for right around $400 maybe, and for what you get, it's a, it's a great value. It is not a high-end, super high-quality looking trailer. It's a bolt together. It comes in a cardboard box. Uh, the newer ones, I believe, have a bracket back here, so you can fold the thing up and stand it up in the corner of your shop. This one doesn't have that. Um, when we first bought this and assembled it, I assembled it at a friend shop, who was a full welding shop and everything. I was fully intending to bolt this thing together and then go through and weld everything. Uh, as we went through the process of bolting it together, the thing was very sturdy, so I really didn't do anything to it as far as modification structurally. And I haven't done anything since. Um, it's very sturdy, uh, works out quite well. So. Uh, Another real good pro of this trailer is, is it's lightweight. You don't have to back, you know, there's no tongue jack on this thing. Uh, you can see I just got a little wood stand that it sits on. You don't have to back the car up to it, you know, jockey the thing for position trying to get it long, low, lined up. Just pick the thing up, drag it around wherever you need to go. If you're not good at backing a trailer up in tight spaces and you're in town and you can't get the trailer where you want it to be, you just unhook it real quick push the trailer where you want it to be, back the car up, hook it back up, and you're good to go. So it's nice and convenient that way, uh, light. Uh, you might be able to see down here, I actually added an angle iron bracket down here with some scrap metal to put the spare tire up there on the tongue, which adds a little bit of weight. The spare tire's not on there right now. It adds a little bit more weight to the tongue, so it's a little bit heavier when you're carrying it around, but it's really not bad at all. Uh, as far as pros, again, um, so 4x8 model, if you look, the, the axle is offset back. Uh, so the axle center line is about 4 foot 6. So it's offset a little bit on the trailer. So if you put something centered on here, it gives you a little bit of tongue weight um, in general, which is nice. It keeps the trailer from bouncing so much. Uh, but it also doesn't add so much tongue weight that, you know, a light, I tow this with a Honda CRV most of the time. It doesn't add so much tongue weight that it upsets uh, or squats the back of the car down very much. Also, the distance from the ball to the trail to the axle center line is pretty good, so it backs up reasonably well. Um, it's not the easiest trailer I've ever backed up, but uh, the shorter you get that distance, the quicker that the trailer tends to react when you're backing it up. So this one backs up fairly decent. Uh, positives, again, um, i trying to think, that it's, it, it's just worked very well. This trailer I use a lot for building materials. Um, uh, sometimes I'll pick up equipment on it, things like that. 
The one thing about building materials being that it's completely fat, flat trailer, even with the spare tire sitting in here, uh, you can put long materials on. So I have taken a uh, 2 by 16 board on here once and put it like right there at the tongue. And from there to the back is 11 feet. So that 2 by, si two by 8 by 16 was hanging off the back 5 feet. Not something you want to do every day, um, but if you've got 12 foot lumber, you can you know, offset it to the front a little bit get a nice balance and you know hang off the back a foot and a half something like that so you can get 12 foot lumber on here with no problems at all uh, equipment so this is a three quarter inch pressure treated deck that we put on uh, spend good money to get a nice heavy pressure treated one so if you get a piece of equipment that's kind of odd shaped and it wants to slide around uh, you just take some two by materials block it in and then just deck screw it down That'll keep it from moving around quite so much. Uh, the if you've got something high center of gravity or high ground clearance like a four wheeler back there, short ramp you can drive that thing right up on here with no problems. I've called the four wheeler before. If you are doing small lawn mowers, things like that uh, that have very low ground clearance, this trailer can be difficult for that. The back of this thing when it's on the back of our car is about 20, 21 inches off the ground, so you'd need a fairly long ramp to be able to get up without uh, high centering on the mower deck. Um, one issue we had with this trailer, which really wasn't an issue for us, but it may be for you if this is what you're looking for. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but there's a pivot point here and then a, a, a locking bolt here. This trailer is meant to pivot. Uh, allegedly, this is a tilt trailer. Uh, so it pivots on this bolt. When we originally assembled this trailer, the uh, bed of it was nice and square, all good with that. The tongue did not fit in there cleanly. It, you know, you had to torque it a little bit to get the tongue in there. And if you wanted to use it as a pivot, it wasn't going to work very well because, like I say, this thing was kind of uh, in there fairly tight. I have no need for the tilt. I don't know if it's the trailer's fault or if it was something that we did when we were assembling it. Either way, it was not an option that I was concerned about. It's something I would look at, uh, pay attention to when you're assembling yours, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, again, it really was not a, a, a feature that I was looking for, so it didn't really bother me too much. So just something to look at. Uh, negatives, uh, so that, just watch out for that. The hubs on these are all metric. In and among, you know, in that, all by itself, not a problem. They work just fine. I've never had to replace a bearing. I've never replaced a seal on it even. However, the dust cap, you can probably see, this is a plastic water bottle, and I'm a little embarrassed to say that that's been on there for three years. Uh, that was a good MacGyver solution, and I should have fixed it right immediately afterwards, but it's not given me trouble since, so. Um, I'm trying to find a, a proper dust cap. So I drove into town one day, got to, I believe, Home Depot, and looked, and the dust cap was missing. And again, I said I drive on a fair amount of dirt roads. If I would have left that thing open, uh, driving on a dirt road, it would have tore up those bearings fairly quickly. So looked in the back of the car, found a water bottle, uh, cut, cut it in half, dried it out, went to Home Depot, bought a hose clamp, hose clamped it on. It's been on there ever since, worked beautifully, not ideal. Um, I believe the bore on this is 52 millimeters, so it's a little bit bigger than a two inch, which is a typical small trailer axle. So bearing seals and then these dust caps are not something that you can go necessarily get right off the shelf. So it could be an issue. It really hasn't been much of an issue for me. I probably, uh, I, if, if I could have bought a dust cap right off the shelf, I would have replaced it right away. So it is a bit of an issue. So just something to be aware of. The axle is held up very well otherwise, like I said, we bounced this thing up and down the road real uh, quite a bit with no problems. Fenders, on the other hand, this is probably the biggest problem we've had with this. This trailer has a bracket, an L bracket that bolts on the frame like this and then it comes across the top and you can see two bolts up here. That bracket, on the very first trip, there were no dirt roads, this was just down the interstate. Uh, we had an 800 pound motorcycle, like I say, on the trailer. 
and driving down the interstate 60 miles an hour, all of a sudden I looked and the bracket was starting to fatigue and crack. It was cracked about halfway across. Just because the thing bounces a little bit when going down the road, so it just fatigues it. So immediately took the uh, fenders off because I didn't want the fender to break at 60 miles an hour and go through the side of the tire and cause all sorts of carnage. Uh, then I got lazy and didn't do anything about the tires. Then <laughs> we were driving down the dirt road with the trailer and the uh, trailer tire with no fender on it kicked, uh, grabbed a little stone, kicked it, threw it forward and blew out the back window of the Honda. So that was about a $150 lesson to be learned, don't drive without fenders. So what I ended up doing was uh, repairing the crack in the little L bracket and then I found, uh, made some holes in the lower corners of the two fenders and I bolted. So the fender has the L bracket on it and then it has a bolt at the front and a bolt at the rear. And you can see it's still a little bit bouncy and that's because these lower corners of the fenders have now cracked. So I need to get in there and do a little bit of uh, work. They're still fairly secure, but I'll be fixing those up this winter probably. So the fenders have been a little bit of an issue. Like I say, I, I do a fair amount of rough roads, so you may not have the same problem, but it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, dee, 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 dee. This light, I believe, has been repaired, but that's not a fault of Harbor Freight. Somebody drove into it and actually admitted to it and bought us the parts to fix it, which was great. Um, one thing that we did is a modification when we originally built it. Uh, this plug, I believe, has been replaced once already. No fault of Harbor Freight. I believe we drug it down the road once. Uh, however, the wiring harness on here, fairly light duty, inexpensive as you would expect. Uh, all the other light fixtures on the tra trailer have, are original. They've held up quite nicely. The wiring harness on here had a short ground lead that would go from the plug to the tongue and then ground and then each light grounded to the frame as well. Thought that was a little bit kind of a weak spot so what we ended up doing is running a ground wire to each of the individual component just as a little bit better just trying to upgrade it a little bit while we built it and then we also put wire loom on most of the wiring as well. Uh, the finish has been completely sandblasted off everything that's on the front of the trailer it's been beaten senseless by stones and things like that. But overall, the trailer has been great. Um, the, I, ha I haven't looked extensively at cost of trailers, but I've got a, a little uh, folding uh, deck trailer here that my neighbor owns. Because I'm doing some work on their lawnmower, and I, when I was getting ready to do this, I looked that up, and the most inexpensive model of that's about $1,000. It's a great trailer. It's, it's uh, all welded construction, uh, very high quality, great for loading tra uh, mowers on, things like that, and, but it's not something that you could put long building materials on. It's got uh, sides on it, so you're kind of uh, fixed sides that you can use. Again, if you're doing lawnmowers all day long, it's the thing to have. If you're just moving stuff once in a while, this thing has been great. We built our house and half the supplies that uh, we used to build the house came home on this thing. We didn't own a pickup truck at the time. Uh, there's a lot of people that go out and spend a ton of money to buy a pickup truck so that they can move something once a month maybe. This is a great option. Uh, if you've got almost any car will pull this thing and if you don't overload it, don't abuse it, it'll hold up great for you. So. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick shot. I'll show you the trailer style that I'm talking about. Let me turn you around here. I don't know how focus will be outside. That's the other style trailer that I was talking about. Um, very high quality trailer, but quite a bit more expensive and just not the style that I need. And on that, we're going to finish up, but I'm going to give you a little teaser from RJ's workshop. And this is RJ's other workshop. So, thanks for watching, and uh, come back again when I, uh, I'll get you some more content coming up fairly soon. Take care.